Hi everyone, I'm Joyce Hesselberth. I'm the author and illustrator of Pitter Pattern and this is the book that I want to read to you today. This book is all about patterns, where you find them in nature, in the days of the week, in music, in movement. Um, and then afterwards we're going to do a project based on the book and look for patterns wherever you are. So when I think about the sound of rain, this book starts with rain, and when I think about the sound that rain makes, I think it sounds like pitter pitter pat, pitter pitter pat. So if you can say that with me, pitter pitter pat, that's how the story starts. Pitter pitter pat, pitter pitter pat. Hey, it's a pitter pitter pattern. Lou helps her friends take off their wet things. Boot boot puddle, boot boot puddle. Another pattern. What comes next? Boot, boot, puddle. Then they go in and they have a snack. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. There are patterns everywhere. How many can you find? So if you look around, where do you see patterns? I see patterns in the spots in the dog. And I see stripes on this vase. I even see a pattern in the flowers. Look, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow. What do you think comes next? Did you guess red? After snack time, Lou says goodbye to her friends. She'll see them again next Sunday. Next Sunday, hey, the days of the week are a pattern too. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then it starts again. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Monday. Lou has soccer practice after school on Monday. She and her teammates practice kicking the ball between the cones. In, out, in, out, in, out. Soccer balls are made of black and white shapes that fit together. These shapes curve around the entire ball. On Tuesday, Lou goes to a piano lesson. Hey, look at the piano keys. Two black keys, three black keys. Two black keys, three black keys. All the way up the keyboard. The notes on the white keys are a pattern too. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it starts again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Lou claps her hands together to learn the rhythm of the song. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ah, ah, ah. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ah, ah, ah. Music is full of patterns. Wednesday, in dance class. The beat of the drum is a pattern. Boom, ba, ba, boom. Boom, ba, ba, boom. And the steps in Lou's dance make a pattern. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Thursday, what a nice day. Lou and her dad go for a walk in the park. Are there patterns here? We're going to go for a walk in the woods in a little bit and we'll see lots of the same patterns. But I see patterns on the tree and in the deer, on the spots, and I see patterns in the flowers. And here, when you walk in the water, do you ever notice the ripples in the water start off small and they get bigger, 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 biggest? That's a growing pattern. And some of the animals that you might see in a pond or a stream have patterns too. Friday, Lou spends Friday night with her grandma. They curl up in quilts and read a story. The patterns in the quilts all have names. Evening Star, Pinwheels, Attic Windows, and Lou's favorite, Flying Geese. When the story's over, it's time for bed. It's hard to fall asleep. Counting sheep might help. White sheep, white sheep, black sheep. White sheep, white sheep, black sheep. 
white sheep, white sheep, black sheep. Lou falls asleep. The next morning, Lou and her grandma ride the bus to the school, to the zoo. Look, all the cars are in a pattern. There's bus, car, 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 bus, car, car, car. And the buildings, you can find patterns there too. Are there patterns here? I see lots of patterns in the animals. There's stripes on a zebra and there's spots on the snake, and spots on the giraffes too. And here, Lou loves all the animals she saw today. She can't wait to tell her friends all about them on Sunday. Pitter, pitter, pat. Pitter, pitter, pat. Pitter, pitter, pat. The end. In the back, you can read a little bit more about patterns and there are different kinds of patterns. Some of them are repeating patterns and some of them are growing or shrinking patterns. Today, I thought I would look around my house and then outside my house too to see what kind of patterns that I could find. And um, we're gonna make kind of a little bit of a messy project today, which is my favorite kind. All you need for this project are a few things. You just need some charcoal or pastel, something like that. Even if you um, unpeel a crayon and take the side of a crayon, you can make rubbings with that. And then the other thing you'll need is just sheets of white paper. Copy paper works great. Um, anything that's like simple and easy and kind of thin is best for this project. So just some copier paper or some rice paper if you have that is, is really good too. Um, let's get started. Let's go look around. We're going to start looking around my house to see what I can find. And then we're going to go outside. Come on. This is the air conditioning vent in our house. And I'm going to just put a piece of paper over it and take my pastel and rub it all over. Oh look, my cat likes it too. And see what kind of pattern we get. Guess where I am now? I'm standing in my bathtub and look at this great pattern. So it has all different tile here and they're all different colors, but they're in a grid. And when you do a rubbing, you can get a nice grid pattern. Let's go this way too so we can get a little bit more detail. There it is. What do you think? I'm in the kitchen now and we're going to try, this is a caddy from that holds a silverware in the dishwasher. And we'll try this one in purple. cheese grater, kind of similar. I'll try this one in blue. It feels much bumpier. is a bag that onions come in so it's a little bit finer of a texture. Let's see what happens. It sounds really different, doesn't it? 
and you can see just a little bit what that onion bag looked like. I found a lot of coins in the coin jar. So let's see what happens when we spread them out flat and then do a rubbing of them. You can tell what we're gonna get, right? We have all different sizes because we have pennies and nickels and dimes here. And we get polka dots. Okay, so we found a bunch of patterns around the house. Now let's head outside and see what we can find in nature. I'm in the woods uh, behind our house and there are so many patterns in nature. So in the book, you remember that Lou and her dad go for a walk in the park and they see patterns in the leaves and patterns in animals and patterns on and trees and everywhere around them. So um, I thought I'd come down here for a little bit and see what patterns we can find. One thing that I see are these ferns. They have lots of, of leaves that go from the base to the tip and they get smaller and smaller each step along the way, which is a shrinking pattern, right? We talked about growing and shrinking patterns in the book. So let's do a rubbing of this and see what it looks like. Okay, so I have a surface to work on. I wanted to have, I brought some cardboard down with me into the woods um, so that I could have something hard to work on. And look, you'll notice it's starting to rain here. <laughs> kind of appropriate, right? It's a pitter pitter pattern. And I'm gonna put the fern right down on top of the cardboard and my paper like that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of press it down a little bit because this fern is a little bit bumpy. But I wanna see if we can get more of its detail on here. So we talk in the book about growing patterns and shrieking patterns, and this fern is a good example. Each little set of leaves gets smaller and smaller as it goes to the top. Or if you turn it around, right, bigger and bigger as it goes to the bottom. You can kind of see some of the detail now, and the stem that goes all the way through the middle. There. Pretty neat, right? Let's take a look at another leaf shape too. This leaf has veins that go all the way up. And if you look on the back, you can see the veins a little bit more clearly. So I'm gonna rub from the back of the leaf. Again, I'm gonna just put my paper down and press it a little bit. Let's see. So each vein comes out from the center, and then you see smaller veins that come off of that as well. That's a nice one. Did you ever notice the really cool texture on bark on trees? This one I thought has really a nice, nice texture. I thought we'd see what kind of pattern it makes. It's really bumpy and really lumpy. <laughs> it's hard to get a good rubbing here. So let's go a little bit longer and see what we get. And then we'll try a tree maybe that has um, a smoother bark. See how the ridges start to come out a little bit. And how the bark kind of goes in lines up and down the tree, but they're really bumpy lines.
Well, I can't get a very good rubbing from this one, although it's kind of still has a nice te texture. So I don't know if I like this rubbing quite as much, but I love this tree. Good tree. Well, this tree has a really different texture to it. It has a lot finer texture. So let's see what happens. And then we do a rubbing of this one. It's a little bit easier to rub just because it's not quite so lumpy and bumpy. And it has more of a speckle pattern in the rubbing. found another pattern in the woods. Look, this is a toadstool. This one's not in very good shape, but if you look underneath, you can see that the gills are a pattern. They go in a circle all the way around. I don't think we can make a rubbing of this one because it's too delicate, but it's neat to look at. And there are lots of things in the woods that you can find that are, are neat patterns to look at, even if they don't make good rubbings. So that was really fun. I enjoyed making projects with you inside and out. We looked at patterns all around the house and then we looked at patterns in nature and made charcoal rubbings. This one, I think, was my very favorite one today. So I'd love to see what you come up with. Look around wherever you are and see if you can find some patterns and make some rubbings of them. I'd love to see them. Uh, my fingers are really messy now which is a good sign, I think. That means we did some good creative work today. And um, hopefully I'll see you soon. We'll read another story and do another art project. Thanks, bye.